Hey, Mike here. So today I saw this Twitter post or X post, whatever you want to call it now. It says, what if ChatGPT had knowledge from your notes and documents while keeping it all private? You can run AI locally. No data leaves your laptop for custom secure answers from your second brain. Now, when you go down here, of course, it's available on both Windows and Mac. But when you go down here, you see, uh, where is the word? Obsidian. And I saw that word and I thought to myself, I have to try it out. So that's what we're going to do. Let's head on over to the at nomic underscore AI X profile and then into the gpt4all.io website. This is what it looks like. You also have a Ubuntu installer. So for any Linux based devs, well, specifically Ubuntu Linux, you can do that as well. In our case, though, we will be doing the OS X installer. Let's download that real quick and we get this setup window. We're just going to click next. It's fetching the latest versions and such. It's going to go right into our applications folder. That's good. There's some sort of components picker, which there's only one option. So we're just going to click GPT for all and click next. I read through this license and there doesn't seem to be any gotcha in it. So I accept it and click next. Once again, install. And it's going to now download everything that it needs to run the actual application. And now let's click finish. Let's search for GPT for all. There it is. It's very similar to LM studio let me actually put these side by side so here we have the gpt for all window and then next to it we have the lm studio window now i've been using lm studio for the past few months they are updating very frequently they're making use of all of the mac m1 or m series in general features utilizing the gpu cpu etc don't want to get too complicated and into the weeds with how things work here but i wonder if the same software technologies are being used used in GPT for all. Before we continue, I do want to explain in just a little bit of detail what these opt-ins really mean. A lot of the time we see words like anonymous usage analytics or anonymous sharing, and we think that our data is all good, that this is just analytics that are being sent over. So while things such as your IP address or, I don't know, name aren't being sent, any data that you are querying within your chat, especially data within your Obsidian Vault, for example, if you were to opt in and select yes for both of these, then that data will be sent over. If you have sensitive information within your notes or Obsidian Vault, then that sensitive information will be sent in full, nothing redacted, if you have both of these selected as yes. You should have no expectation of chat privacy when this feature is enabled. You should, however, have an expectation of an optional attribution, if you wish. Your chat data will be openly available for anyone to download and will be used by Nomic AI to improve future GPT for all models. These two sentences are the most important. You should have no expectation of chat privacy and your chat data will be openly available for anyone as long as you select yes on these two. That's why personally I am selecting no. The next screen you are hit with are the available models that you can download right away. I'm running this on an Apple M1, 16 gigabytes of memory. It's from 2020. We're talking three to four years old. I know from personal experience that the highest model that I can go to is a 13 billion parameter model. So anything that is below 13 billion parameters, I can use comfortably. Now, apart from downloading models for offline use, you can also utilize ChatGPT straight from the GPT for All program. Now, of course, you need an internet connection as well as API key access, but it is nice to be able to switch between local and online. However, we won't be playing around with that right now. I do want to try the Mistral Open Orca model, so we're going to download that. Here you have your settings icon, and what we are looking to utilize GPT for all for is the local docs feature. So when we click local docs, you are hit with this local document collections, and you have to download their SB. ERT or SBERT, whatever you want to call it. Let's download that. Looks like this download is much quicker because it is smaller in size. It's only 43 megabytes. And now when you are in the local docs settings, you can add your document paths. So what we're going to do is add our Obsidian Vault here. Let's type in Obsidian Vault. I'm going to select my base vault and open it up. We're still waiting on this Mistral Open Orca model to finish downloading. Unfortunately, it seems the download stopped here for some reason. So we're going to have to cancel and then resume. Maybe that will 
kickstart it back up, oh, well, that's a really nice feature. You don't have to restart the entire download. It just starts again from where it left off or froze in this case. All right, so just finished downloading it and now it's calculating the MD5, making sure that everything is as it should be. So let's exit out of here. It says loading model right here at the top. Let's start off and type a message. Hi, how are you? And the response time is very, very fast. That's very good. This is the 7 billion parameter one. Let's try a question such as what's 5 plus 5? The answer is 10. The sum of 5 and 5 is equal to 10. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually turn off my Wi Fi and let's see if it still works. Who is the 41st president of the USA? And there is the answer, George H.W. Bush. And it even gives you the serving years. He succeeded Ronald Reagan and was followed by Bill Clinton. It did have a little bit of a weird add to the end. It predicts what I will ask next. Seems like the syntax might be a little bit off. These are issues you would expect from a 7B model. All right, let's reconnect ourselves to the internet. And let's see what downloading looks like, different models. Now, I read that I could show it the path to the models that are downloaded by LM Studio. That way we can share the models instead of having to download two separate sets of the same model. The only problem is I'm not too sure where LM Studio puts their models. Let's take a look here. Okay, so the local models folder is within our cache LM Studio models directory. So let's take this models folder and place it right here. Head on back to GPT for all and go into models, the bloke, and yeah, let's just add this entire folder. So now I would hope that it will show all of the models. There we go. Perfect. So let's try using a 13 billion parameter model. Orca 2 13B loaded. I have two colors, blue and red. What will happen if I mix them together? Let's see how fast this response is. Okay, so it's certainly not as fast as the 7B, but still very speedy. As you can see here, I have my entire Obsidian Vault connected to the local docs here. So if you click on this little database looking icon, then you'll see that it is indexing my entire Obsidian Vault. Okay, so it is done indexing. So now we can enable it and exit out of here. Let's switch this over to the ChatGPT4. What are the best YouTube video titling practices? So as you can see, it does do a pretty good job of understanding which files within your vault are appropriate for the question that you are asking it. That's why titling your notes within your Zettelkasten is very important in my opinion. It's certainly an automated and easy thing to do with something such as text generators generate title functionality. Let's click on one of these and see what happens. Ah, so it only sends a little portion of the note. What about this one and this one? So again, it only takes in very small snippets of your documentation. Here are my closing thoughts on the matter. Look, it's a cool tool. It's definitely in its infancy. I don't see any reason to use it as of right now, other than if you do want to keep up with its latest updates. If you're going to use something like ChatGPT to chat with your own notes, I would utilize the Obsidian plugin Smart Connections to do that. If you are looking for a local method of chatting with your Obsidian Vault, as in you don't want to use ChatGPT or any other online version, but instead want to chat with your files locally on machine, then yeah, it's a good decision. But you must keep in mind that, again, it's in its very early stages. You're going to see a lot of updates and changes to it throughout the next few months. And as of right now, the quality is nowhere near its potential. So if you are are of the experimenting type, then yeah, go ahead, utilize it. I truly hope that you will find more use from it than I have. For now, personally, I'm going to be sticking to chatting with my notes through smart connections and utilizing text generator. I have found absolutely no other better version than that so far. I really hope that changes because I think that competition is always a healthy thing. And if you become the best plugin or program or whatever in your field, then there's really no incentive to become better. As always, thank you all so much for watching. A special thank you to our patrons, and I will see you in the next video tomorrow.